Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we are back with some more of the one card at a time challenge. So basically what we are going to be doing is uh, similar to the last couple of episodes. We are going to be continuing where we last left off. However, I actually did a lot of duels on stream. So instead of me actually going through and playing the duels live, you can go watch them on my stream. We did a whole bunch and a whole bunch of other things as well on that stream. Um, but we added in a whole bunch of cards and this is what we ended up with. First and foremost, if we are now able to go into Junk Speeder, we are able to go into the Chaos Ruler, which is the card that I added from the last duel, or from the last episode. Um, at the end of the episode, I ended up getting another rank up, and uh, we were able to uh, add in this card. And this allowed us to then add in a whole bunch of other cards, because this was... Yeah, we basically climbed all the way from bronze to silver and uh, from bronze three to silver three And uh, so yeah, we were able to add a whole bunch of cards notable inclusions include the triple junk converter Which we now have I think we had one at the end of the last episode We added in a stardust synchron to ha to have summoned off of the junk speeder as well we have the Fire and Ascator, as well as the Dawnwalker, and most notably, we have the Negate with the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. This just happens to be the easiest Negate that we are able to get onto our side of the field off of a Junk Speeder. So, this is what we ended up going for. Very nice overall. Um, so, yeah, pretty nice. Oh, we also added in the Ash Blossom as well. Realistically, did I need this? No, but it came up occasionally. Uh, so, I'm going to show you the replays that we had from the stream and uh, I'll show you how we did. So I'm basically just going to show you the wins that I had because all of the losses actually ended up just being me playing against like full power meta decks like Sword Soul or the like. Uh, so yeah, here we go with our first duel and uh, I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty good. We got Shard of Greed, we got uh, Call of the Haunted to bring back our monster and out comes Tuning of the, or Turning of the World and out comes Demise. Immediately I am doomed. Uh, he nukes my field punches me for 24 and I go, oh no, this is not looking good. I have the Smashing Ground, so it's not terrible. So we're gonna go Smashing Ground. I actually draw the Unexpected Die. Fantastic, we're gonna go for 1800 to the face. So if you did notice, I actually took out the uh, Chosen by the World Chalice. It's just the worst of the generic um, monsters given its level. The level three isn't the greatest um, and it's not a tuner, so not really worth playing it. So I did end up taking this card out entirely, but it's still being played in this duel. This was also in bronze, so if we get this win, we rank up. They're gonna pay 800 in order to go for a demise once again and punch over. Uh, not looking good for us, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we're basically on a two turn clock, and I draw quite possibly the best draw. If they don't immediately neg or, uh, wipe the field, which if they do, they end up losing their monster thanks to fulfillment of the contract, uh, we do get to steal their monster. So that's ultimately the plan. They're going to normal summon Senju of the Thousand Hands, and then they're going to activate their demise. And, um, man, I love, I, I love bronze. It's, it's so good. It's my favorite. Uh, anyway, we draw Drunk Converter, which does nothing by itself. Cool. Pass the turn. Pass. All right. We are both, I mean, they're playing a ritual deck. It does make sense. But, uh, we draw the MST. Again, not the greatest. Uh, it's just not the greatest. They go to Battle Phase again for some reason, I feel like they're playing evenly matched or something. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, they're going to proceed. At, they're going to set a card. I'll, I'll MST it, I guess. Uh, it's fulfillment of the contract, which is hilarious. We draw Junk Synchron, which is full combo. There we go. So we're going to pitch the Junk Synchron in order to add the Junk Synchron. We're going to bring back the Junk Synchron, or er, the Junk Converter to go into Junk Speeder. Speeder effect is going to activate. We're going to chain it to that, the Junk Converter. Junk Synchron is going to be summoned out as well as the Junk, or the Jet Synchron as well as the Junk Synchron. I'm not even going to waste any more time and just proceed to battle. All right, so here we are going second. And at this point, I still haven't put in the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. So I still think it's better to go second. Um, so yeah, we actually draw full combo and Harpies, which is very nice. Uh, but my opponent just sets and passes. We're going to draw another Beckoned by the World Chalice, which is not going to be used. But we do get to go for the Junk Synchron here, which again is full combo. Our full combo isn't the greatest, but alas, it's something. We're going to go Junk Speeder in order to bring back 
uh, or sorry, we bring out the Junk Synchron, as well as the Jet Synchron, as well as another one from deck. We're gonna go for the Chaos Ruler, we're gonna just mill some cards, basically. Uh, they're not really going to find anything, the only thing that we can find at this point is the Junk Synchron, which, uh... Yeah, uh, they're playing Shadal, Shadal Dragon. They're gonna return our, um, our Chaos Ruler to the deck. Which is not very good. So we're going to set two and pass. My opponent is then going to activate Magical Meltdown. I do need to deal with this. So we're going to tribute off our Jet Synchron in order to deal with it with the Ballista Squad. Ballista Squad has come in clutch quite a few times. So that's why it's still in the deck. We draw the Smashing Ground and I'm just going to proceed to battle because there's nothing else that I can do. We do have Memory of an Adversary in case my opponent does end up attacking me with something inevitably. Uh, they're going to pass again. So... I, I, I don't know what they're doing, uh, but most likely they're playing Invoked Shadal, and they have something like a Shadal Fusion that's just coming off their hand, because I haven't gone into an extra deck monster. Whoops. Anyway, uh, they are finally going to Normal Summon their Alistair, activate the Invocation, or add the Invocation, and then Invocate into Invoked Purgatrio. Um, I don't know why they didn't link off into a light to go for Mechaba so that they could have a negate, but they didn't, because now we can go Memory of an Adversary, take the 29 and just get it later. Get their monster later. Uh, they also never activated their invocation for reasons unknown. I'm gonna Harpy's Feather Duster in the back row. Turns out it was a Solemn Judgment, which wasn't doing anything, and then we'll proceed to battle and win against Normal Alistair. How did we win that? I have no idea, but there you go. All right, and here we are once again going second, and this has to be quite possibly my favorite replay. At this point, I did add in the Ascator, the Dawnwalker, so that we have easier access to our, um, whatchamacallit. They're gonna go for the Sunrise here, and they're going to activate their Liquid Soldier in order to add two, or draw two, and then discard one. They discard the Dust Tornado, interesting. They're gonna Miracleize in order to go for Escorted Out. And then they are going to scoop. My favorite replay. I genuinely don't know what happened in that last replay, but alas, we are going second once again. Again, I do think going second is better here. But my opponent is going to see T set and pass. Now, I make a dumb decision, and I decide to Harpy's Feather Duster that back row. Was there any reason to do that? No. Did I? Yes. We also drew the Ascator, which is like the worst draw. Um, but alas, my opponent is playing Spirit Dragon, so we should be fine. We're going to banish it and uh, just get it back later. However, that will never come, because we draw the Junk Converter. I think at this point I added in a second Junk Converter, uh, or... No, 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 we actually added in the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend at this point. Um... Oh, no, 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 we also added in the Junk Converter and the Stardust at this point, because now we are in Silver. I forgot to mention, now we have, have hit Silver, so I added in three cards. We added in the Hot Red Dragon, we added in the Stardust... Uh, the start of Synchron, as well as the other Junk Converter. So now we have two of those, so it's a little bit more consistent. We're going to go for the Junk Converter and the Stardust, or the Junk Synchron, in order to go into Speeder. Uh, then we are going to summon out the Junk Synchron, the Stardust, as well as the Junk, uh, or sorry, the start of Synchron. The Jet, the Junk, and the Stardust. Anyway, then we go into Chaos Ruler, we didn't find anything, we're going to mill a whole bunch of cards, and then we can actually go into Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. We're going to add to our hand the Junk Converter and proceed to battle. We're going to hit Kid Moto, and uh, out comes their Strong Wind Dragon. At this point, we will just pop it and pass. Uh, pa turn will pass back to them, they are going to Normal Summon Luster Dragon, realize that they can't be a single Omni Negate, and pass the turn, er, uh, concede. Alright, so here we are actually going first this time, because now I have a strategy that can end on a negate. So there is merit to going first. We're going to activate our tuning here in order to grab up the Junk Synchron, which we already have access to with the Junk Converter. So we're going to pitch the Ascator because it's useless. However, realistically, I should have pitched the Jet Synchron so that I could actually get into the negate, since I cannot summon from hand with the Junk Speeder. This is my mistake, I thought you could... It's not Halk. Uh, you cannot summon from hand. So, this was my mistake. Definitely should have sent the Junk Synchron so that I could have special summoned it to get into our negate. So we end up doing the same combo, just this time without the negate. And, again, we still have the Stardust Synchron. We're going to mill a whole bunch of cards, um, because, of course, we are not going to find anything, since we already have the... Um, we're going to have a 1, 2, and 3 of the Junk Synchrons, as well as the only light target that we have with Stardust Synchron. Anyway, we draw Raigeki, which is very funny. But first and foremost, I'm going to normal summon the junk or the jet in order to allow us to go into Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, because I'm guessing they have something like a 
uh, a ring of destruction, a magic cylinder, a something like that, a dimensional prison, Sakuretsu, something like that, that just like might deal with our monster, uh, a bottomless trap hole even. Uh, but seeing as how I, I I knew that they had something like Ring of Destruction because it was something that was activatable. Um, so if they're going to activate their Ring of Destruction, I'm obviously going to negate that. Uh, that's fine. And then I will activate my, uh, my Chaos Ruler, banishing the only light that we have, the start of Synchron, and the only darks that we have with the Junk Synchron in order to bring itself back. They're going to activate Threatening Roar. Fantastic. I had Lethal on board, but alas, cannot do it this turn. They're going to pass the turn, they're going to send another card and pass back. Uh, we do have the Junk as well, and we also have a Monster Reborn. So I'm going to nuke their field. It turns out it's two Kidmotos, and then it turns out they also have Kaiser Glider. If you haven't read this card, I haven't either. Don't worry, I didn't until I had seen this card. But if this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target a monster on the field to return that target to the hand. This happens to play around our Omni Negate ever so specifically. So this is really problematic. But all in all, I, I'm still going to go for it. Might as well, you know. We're going to go Junk Warrior here. And I actually don't activate the Monster Reborn because, again, I haven't read the card. Had I known what this card did, I would have gotten additional damage onto the field so that we could have OTK'd, uh, potentially. Uh, I would have needed, like, 3,000 damage. I would have needed 24. So I actually didn't have anything in Grave that would have gotten me to that. Um, so there's that. I could have Monster Reborn something to potentially give Junk Warrior a little bit more attack, but that wouldn't have mattered. Anyway, they're going to set two and pass. I'm going to, once again, uh, just deal with the back row with MST. I'm going to grab their own Kaiser Glider, and then we will proceed to battle. And Kitchen. I mean, they're playing 57 cards. Did you expect it to be a good deck? No. But alas, they drew two Kid Motos. Very funny. All right, here we are once again going second. I don't know. I'm going second this time. And we are playing against... Uh, is something... Uh, I'm guessing it's Despia. They added the Edgem Chain, which most likely is Despia. And then I see that we are playing against Layer, Layer of Darkness, baby. Uh, we drew a lot of back row removal, so I'm feeling pretty good until I see that they actually activate their polymerization to deal, uh, to I, uh, make a thing. They make Guardian Chimera for reasons I genuinely don't know. But we have full combo Regeki Harpies and Mystical Space Typhoon, which is absolutely crazy hand. But there you go. We don't know the last card in hand, but we do know that one of them is just a nothing. Um, so there's that. I'm going to MSD the only card that I can. And then we will bring out the Beckons here. And then Raigeki, their last monster. Uh, we can then go for the Junk Synchron in order to add back the Junk Converter and go for Junk Speeder. You will be seeing this a lot in the future because this is, again, the main combo. This is just something that we are going to do every time, so get used to it. Anyway, we are going to sync off the two level fours to make our chaotic chaos ruler this time. And then we are going to mill a whole bunch of cards, basically. We're never really going to add anything off of this again. But my opponent realizes the writing on the wall and concedes. All right. So, once again, full combo. Harvey's Feather Duster. How does this keep happening? Seriously, this is kind of crazy. My opponent normal summons a Peck Veiler. I don't know either. They... I... Anyway, uh, their one card that could have stopped me is now not doing anything. Um, so, I get full combo. I'm going to go for the Junk Speeder here. We are going to uh, activate the, the Junk Converter. We're going to special summon out a whole bunch of tuners. And then we are going to go for the Chaos Ruler. And then we are going to activate its effect in order to go into our... Uh, or, sorry. Mill everything. Go into our Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. We're going to bring back the Junk Synchron. And uh, the reason I brought this back was because I was like, Oh, let me go into a Link Monster. Alas, I'm locked into Synchros. My bad. Anyway, we're going to uh, bring back the Toon Warrior because we happen to mill it off of our Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. And uh, pass. We have the one Omni Negate, which should be enough. And then I see the Prank Kid come down. We already saw the Pandemonium, but seeing the Prank Kid means that uh, there's a high chance that we just lose this. Out comes the Meow Meow Mew. They're going to activate the effect of their pa pa Parallel Exceed in hand. Call called by. Huh. Oh, I... Okay. Alright. Our Chaos Ruler is gone. Disappointing. They bring out the fanzies. They're going to activate their Parallel Exceed. And at this point, I'm mostly scared about a Baguska until I see this happen. Phoenix. Okay. Activate Phoenix. Pitch the third Parallel Exceed. 
To pop our called by a uh, haunted Call of the Haunted. There we go. And then they make a second Phoenix. Hey, here's the Mighty Warrior. Anyway, um, yeah, so I win this game. I have no idea what was going on. I should not have won this game. Uh, but there you go. Alright, so again, here is the list that we ended on. Uh, we changed out a lot of things. Notably, we only have the one Toon Warrior left. Uh, I still keep in the triple unexpected die because it is nice to just get another body onto the field. For example, if we need a two with the, um, like, for example, we have Junk Synchron, but we don't have a two. It's very nice to be able to get the crowned out onto the field. Um, we also can get Beckoned, which uh, it's surprisingly just an 1800 monster tends to be enough. I don't know why, but it does. Uh, so yeah, all in all, the deck is fine. It When it does the combo, though, being able to end on a negate is very nice and uh, we still have a lot of ways to go or a lot of way to go so yeah overall i'm pretty happy hope that you guys did indeed enjoy this episode if you did a like is very much so appreciated and if you want to check out more content like this as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh, then just be sure to subscribe anyway thank you guys so much for watching and remember to always stay frosty Bye bye and a shout out to the frost guard my members ascended and yorda Thank you guys so much for the support. Hope that you guys enjoy the content.